Hello there again students, in this video we will focus on the different textual aids that may be used in understanding text. After watching this video, you are expected to differentiate linear and nonlinear text and convert nonlinear information to textual information and vice versa. And I am your teacher, MD. So, have you heard about linear and nonlinear text? The difference between a linear text and nonlinear text is the reading path, or how we read the information presented to us. A linear text is a traditional text that needs to be read from beginning to end, while a nonlinear text is not required to be read from beginning to end since its reading path is non sequential. Linear texts include short stories, novels, letters, and educational texts, while nonlinear texts include visual aids such as graphic organizers, concept maps, diagrams, and charts. Transcoding linear to nonlinear text and vice versa is a skill that one has to be familiar with since it can be used in our everyday lives. There will be times when you would have to transcode a linear text to nonlinear text to make it easier for other people to understand a nonlinear text to linear text to have a detailed description of a certain topic. Now, the question is how? Transcoding linear to nonlinear text. Follow five steps. Step one, read the text and get the main idea. Comprehension is indeed necessary in this part. No matter how much knowledge you have about the different examples of textual aids, transcoding them from linear to nonlinear will be very difficult if you did not understand the text that you read. Step two. Extract necessary information for the visual presentation. Since your goal is to make it nonlinear, you have to learn how to select the important information only, which you will include in your textual aid. Step 3. Remember to use keywords or phrases only. Of course, you don't want to make it look like a linear text, so using keywords or simple phrases is a must. Step 4. Classify information into categories. This will help you determine the type of textual aid to use. Are, you, are your categories more of similarities and differences, causes and effects, main idea and supporting ideas, or anything else? Finally, step 5. Make sure to use the correct nonlinear text to present the information. Since there are a lot of textual aids that you may use, you must be careful and select the most appropriate textual aid as your nonlinear material. Now, let us have the different forms or types of textual aids. First, the cause and effect diagram. So we have the problem and then the causes. This diagram emphasizes the connection between the different concepts. It is sometimes called as the beneficial organizer since it can be applied to all subject areas. This is more known as the fishbone or Ishikawa diagram, named after Kaoru Ishikawa, a Japanese professor who created the said diagram. Here is a more concrete example of Ishikawa diagram. As you can see, the problem is excessive typing typing errors, and the causes are machine, man, method, and material. Meanwhile, the small arrows show more specific root causes of the above-mentioned four causes. Flow chart or flow diagram. This is a sequence chart that shows a series of events in order. If you have a concept that has steps such as processes or sequence, 
the flow diagram is the applicable text aid organizer. Third is the Venn diagram. It is used to identify, classify, categorize, and recognize similarities and differences of two or more subjects, ideas, thoughts, or concepts or simply to compare and contrast ideas. It can be found in teacher resource materials, examinations, handouts, and etc. Circle that overlap shows the similarities, while circles that do not overlap show the differences. Next, we have the graphic organizers. These textual aids are visual displays that have key content information. These textual aids provide learners with structure for abstract concepts. These are usually created and designed for those who have trouble organizing information and thoughts. In the example, we have the topic sentence followed by three supporting details and finally the concluding sentence. Aside from this, we still have other forms or examples of non-textual information like the concept map. A concept map is a diagram or graphical tool that visually represents relationships between concepts and ideas. Most concept maps depict ideas or boxes as boxes or circles, which are connected with lines or arrows. Like in the example, the main idea is fitness, and some of the supporting ideas that one can relate from it are gym, sport, diet, and a lot more. Next, spider map. A spider map or semantic map is a visual tool to organize data in a logical way. A main concept is written at the center and lines are used to link ideas. Sensory observation chart. It is a kind of chart used to record sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell of some objects or process. Another is line graph. This is used to track changes over short and long periods of time. Line graphs are better to use than bar graphs when smaller changes exist. Bar graph. Bar graph is used to compare things between different groups or to track changes over time. Bar graph is best to use when trying to measure larger changes over time. Pie graph. This is used to show percentages of a whole and represents percentages as a set point in time. Unlike line and bar graphs, pie graph or pie chart does not show changes over time. Like when you are asked to budget your money for a month, this type of material is the most appropriate non-linear material to use. Then we have the pictograph. Pictograph is a way of showing data using images. Each image stands for a certain number of things. As such, in the example pictograph, Apple got 10 votes as compared with avocado, grapes, and banana. Thus, the smiley represents the number of votes per fruit. Meanwhile, an infographic is a collection of imagery, charts, and minimal text that gives an idea to, that are easy to understand. Hence, in the example, the infographic focuses on study habits where images and short explanation related to ideas set study goals, collaborate with study partners, and test yourself were used. There are really a lot of nonlinear illustrations that we may use to present information. In order to select the most appropriate material to use, you must understand the usage of each textual aid 
and also the content of the text that you will transcode. On the other hand, to make these materials linear text, you must learn how to interpret them in order to put them into sentence or paragraph form. For example, this pie graph, which is a non-linear text, shows one's payday budget. Then, I transcode it to linear text by interpreting it and writing a paragraph relevant to the graph as in, whenever I receive my monthly salary, I usually list my possible expenses and the amount that I will allot for the category. In the pie graph, it is evident that 25% of my budget goes to food allowance and another 25% goes to school allowance. These two are followed by utility bills and transportation that take 15% of my salary. Finally, I make sure that I save 10% of my salary and deposit it in my account and the remaining 10% goes with medicine or em emergency situations. Budgeting is really a challenging thing, but it is really one of the best ways to make sure that you will be able to spend your money wisely. Very simple, right? So that is how you will make the nonlinear text into a linear text. And so we are finally done with lesson two. Again, thank you for watching. Just wait for my other videos and let's continue learning. This has been Teacher MD. Good day!